Good morning. On this Thanksgiving Sunday, we have three um, Bible readings. The first is from Psalm 100. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. The second reading is from Luke chapter 17 beginning at verse 11. Jesus heals 10 men with leprosy. Now, on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, 10 men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go, show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, were not all 10 cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, rise and go. Your faith has made you well. And the third reading from Colossians chapter three beginning at verse 15. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace, and be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in work or do deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning, friends. My name is John Forsyth. I'm the Vicar of St. Jude's, and it's my great pleasure uh, to look at the scriptures with you and reflect on this wonderful theme of thanksgiving. Uh, during a year that has felt tough uh, and unusual, it is good that we pause and reflect and say thank you to our great God for his extraordinary blessings to us. Well, it was the winter of 1637 and the Lutheran minister, Martin Rinkart, trudged through the snow in the town of Eilenburg in Saxony. And he was on his way to conduct the burial of a parishioner who died of the plague. Now, Eilenburg had never been a particularly pleasant city. Uh, Martin Luther once referred to it as a blessed pit of lard. Needless to say, it didn't rank very highly on TripAdvisor. But now the plague had struck this town with devastating effect. And as the only surviving pastor in the town, Martin Rinkart was now burying between 40 and 50 people a day. During that year, 1637, he buried 4,480 people, including his own wife. In the midst of such tragedy, you would think that Martin Rinkhart had every reason not to be thankful. 
But yet it was during this very time that Martin Rinkart penned his most famous hymn. Now thank we all our God with hearts and hands and voices, in whom his world rejoices, sorry, who wondrous things have done, in whom his world rejoices, who from our mother's arms has blessed us on our way with countless gifts of love and still is ours today. Well, people desperate for light and hope and direction rallied to these words and his hymn soared in popularity. And what Rinkart's hymn does is not just remind his congregation, but reminds us that when we give thanks, we are doing so for not just the gifts we receive, but for the giver of those gifts. In other words, our thankfulness is not just dependent on our situation, but much more upon the God to whom we worship. And the most extraordinary gift of all, our salvation in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I think one of the reasons Martin Rinkart's story strikes us as so remarkable is, if you are anything like me, my heart doesn't incline to thankfulness. It inclines to grumbling and complaint and comparison rather than thanksgiving and praise. And I'm tempted to complain about what I do not have rather than give thanks for what I do have. And I'm tempted to compare myself to others, uh, but only those others who are doing better than me. We compare up rather than be content with what we do have. And the scriptures are full of wonderful truths about thankfulness. Uh, And because we are doing a shorter service, I am preaching a shorter sermon. So uh, if you have nothing else to give thanks for this morning, you can give thanks for that. And so I just want to have two brief points uh, on some reflections from scripture on thankfulness. And firstly, and that is that thankfulness is a response to grace. Thankfulness is a response to grace. And secondly, that thankfulness is active. Thankfulness leads to action. Uh, There'll be a chance for us to reflect further on these things when we gather for our congregational Zoom meetings after this part of the service. But firstly, thankfulness is a response to grace. Put simply, when we forget about grace, we forget to be thankful. We see this in our story from Luke. In the ancient world, leprosy was a terrible disease. Not only did it permanently disfigure those who had it, it actually cast them off from society. They were in isolation or lockdown for life. They were separate. Without exception, every leper yearned for one thing, not just to be healed, but to restored to the community that they belong to. And so in Luke 17, we read of 10 lepers who approached Jesus outside the village, of course, because they were not allowed into the village. And at a distance, they plead with Jesus, Jesus, heal us, Master, have pity on us. And we read in verse 14, that when Jesus saw them, he said to them, go, show yourselves to the priests, And as they went, they were cleansed. That's extraordinary, isn't it? He just says, go. And they are healed. And these ten men are not just healed, but after they've shown themselves to the priests, the priest could say to them, yes, you are clean. You are able to reintegrate into society. You can go back to your family, to your children, to your wives, to your friends. You can hug them perhaps for the first time in years. They have so much to be thankful for. But in spite of this life-changing gift, we read that just one of these lepers, or ex-lepers, returns to Jesus. And he is an outsider, a Samaritan. The rest leave without a word of thanks their minds preoccupied with their their newfound life, their restoration. 
but no sense of thanks. So what's going on here? Why did this one Samaritan leper comprehend that these other nine didn't comprehend? What what was it? And I think what what this passage is teaching us very powerfully is that thankfulness is a response to grace. Thankfulness is a response to grace. Now we have a very wonderful staff team here at St Jude's. And I'm very thankful for them. Uh, They've worked extremely hard, not just normally, but particularly over the last eight or nine months. But one thing I've never received from my staff is a thank you letter for paying them. Not that I pay them directly, but as their boss. But it would be bizarre, right, if I got a thank you letter. Dear John, thanks for the salary this month. It was a lovely surprise. No, reality is, of course, a salary is something that you expect. It's it's not something that you would be surprised to receive. And, And the temptation is that we believe that God's love and blessings are something that we are owed. They're something that we are entitled to. And we forget that they are an undeserved gift. See, if I believe that something is owed to me, then there's no need for a thankful heart. And so the question that this story from Luke's gospel asks us is, which one of the lepers are you? Do you see God's love and blessing and healing as something that you're entitled to? Or do you see God's love and blessing not as something you deserve, but as something you are given for free? This theme is picked up, actually, in in our reading from Psalm 100. Notice in verse 4, the psalmist gives us the command to come to God with thanks and praise. It says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. That's the command, verse 4. Verse 5 gives us the reason to do so. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His thankfulness continues through all generations. In other words, our thanksgiving is a response to God's goodness. Our thanksgiving is a response to God's love. Our thanksgiving is a response to God's faithfulness. An entitled heart is a heart that is cold towards God. It's a heart that is indifferent to his love and mercy and faithfulness. It's a heart that has forgotten how dependent we are on God for everything. And nothing turns us into bitter, selfish, dissatisfied people more quickly than an ungrateful heart. And nothing will do more to restore contentment and the joy of salvation than a true spirit of thankfulness. And so if you want to become a more thankful person... If you want your heart softened to be less entitled, to be more grateful, pause and remind yourself of the enormity of what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for you. Remember grace. See, the Lord Jesus has not just healed us from a disease, far more. He has given his life for you that you may live forever with him. The undeserved gift of forgiveness and eternal life. That is grace. And so if you want to become more thankful, just reflect on that. Look to Christ. Be reminded of his sacrificial love and your heart will grow in thankfulness. As I reflect upon the last year, I've been struck by the extraordinary number of things to be thankful to God for. As we've struggled through the pain of lockdown and wrestled with isolation and anxiety, God has continued to be faithful to his promises. This year has given us unexpected gospel opportunities to speak of the hope that we have in the Lord Jesus. 
We are thankful as a church that God has continued to grow his church, even though we've not been able to meet together in person. We are thankful for the people who've become followers of Jesus through Christianity Online and other, and other courses that we've run. We are thankful for those people who've joined us through our live stream service who we may never have seen face to face. We are thankful that people have grown in their knowledge and love of the Lord Jesus through our live stream services, through our small groups, through our discipleship explored online, through the best news ever challenge. All these things are wonderful because they reflect upon God's grace and, and, and lead our hearts to become thankful. We are thankful that we've become more dependent upon God in prayer. One of the great blessings of this time is establishing this wonderful morning prayer group that each week morning meets at 8 o'clock to pray. I'm thankful for the staff and parish council and volunteers who have worked tirelessly to serve us so faithfully. I'm thankful for the technology and resources that's made all of this thing possible. And I'm thankful for the wonderful truth that the time has now come where we're beginning to be able to meet together in person. What a wonderful thing to celebrate. I wonder what things you are thankful to God for as you reflect upon his grace in your life. As you reflect upon this year, what things can you say thank you to our gracious God for? Once again, there'll be a chance for that a bit later on. That's our first point. Thankfulness is a response to God's grace. And secondly, thankfulness is active. It leads to action. On uh, March the 28th this year, Jeff Gerson arrived at New York Hospital with shortness of breath, an uncontrollable cough, and a 39-degree fever. Uh, as you would expect, uh, a day or so later, he was diagnosed with COVID-19, and he was actually put on a ventilator and spent a month in a coma. When he was finally released from hospital, Jeff attempted to track down every medical professional who helped him recover. This is what Jeff says. The story, if there is one, is not necessarily that I survived, but these people saved my life. I really felt the need to find them, get their names, and thank them. It took Jeff five months to track down every medical professional who helped save his life. The list was... 116 people. He individually thanked 116 people. Thankfulness is active. When that Samaritan leper was healed, he didn't just feel thankful. It led him to action. Tim Keller says, gratitude is what you feel Thanksgiving is what you do. Thanks throughout Scripture, notice, is something that we give. It is thanksgiving, not thanks feeling. And so we need to move beyond just that feeling of gratitude, and it should drive us to action. In the great hymn, now thank we all our God with hearts and hands and voices. It is active. It's the obedience and service of the Lord Jesus as an expression of our thanks to him. Have a look at our Colossians reading to see how active thanks is. Uh, picking it up from uh, partway through verse 16. Notice he, Paul says there, look, singing to God with gratitude in your heart. Singing is, is a form of thanks. Verse 17, and whatever you do, whether in word or deed... Do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. In other words, your words and your deeds should reflect your heart of thankfulness. If you are truly thankful to God for the gift of life, 
And it should lead that life to be a life that is active in service of God. Paul puts it this way in 2 Corinthians 9 verse 12. This service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of God's people, but is overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. Because of the service by which you have proved yourselves, others will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ and for your generosity in shaping with them and with everyone else. See, friends, thankfulness is not just a feeling, it it is an action. And so the question that we ask here as we look at Scripture is, well, how does your life reflect the thankfulness to God, your thankfulness to God? How does your use of time reflect your thankfulness to God? How do your money and your gifts reflect your thankfulness to God? Thankfulness is not just what we feel, it is what we do, it is active. See, friends, ultimately our gratitude to God does not depend upon our situation, but ever relies on the grace of the Lord Jesus. For he has provided for us our greatest need. See, each Christmas we remember this great gift. In this Advent season, we are waiting expectantly for the return of Christ where all things will be fulfilled. And as we approach Christmas, we remember that gift of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come to us in human flesh. Come to us so that he died and was raised again, uh, raised again. So that we can know him personally and spend eternity with him. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Let me pray. We thank you, all our God, with our hearts and our hands and our voices. For you have done wondrous things, and in you your world rejoices. We thank you that from our mother's arms you have blessed us on our way with countless gifts of love and still are ours today. Amen.